Hey guys, what's up? This is Chaos Bender here again for yet another video, and welcome to the first of three videos that will turn you into a Mario Kart 7 Master. Today, how to get three stars in every one of the difficulties and every one of the cups. Okay, to the point. There are two factors that will decide what rank you're going to get. Number one, get first place in all four of the tracks. This is mandatory, never will you hit anything above 1 star if you do not have all 40 points, 10 for each track. This is the most important thing to keep in mind if you want those 3 golden stars. Do not let your guard down and always have everyone behind your ass. Number 2. Get the best times that you can. While it is important to finish every race in first place, you won't get those 3 stars if your time isn't good enough. We will discover how to get the best possible times on every track on later videos, but for now, you need to finish everything as soon as possible. Avoid falling to bottomless pits, running into walls, and going off track. Now, wait a second, you might be like, is that it? That's too obvious. Well, look at the time length, we are not even halfway done. The two tips listed before are the ones that count towards your ranking. However, there are multiple sub-factors that will help you meet the requirements. You are about to listen a set of tips that will maximize your chances at finishing all of the races in first place in the best possible time, things which will decide what rank you get. So grab a pen and paper, sit back, learn, and most importantly, enjoy. Number 1. Picking your cart. This matter will be covered on an entirely separate video, but for now, this is what you need to know. To get those 3 stars, you will need to be in first place as much as you can. What does this mean? You aren't going to get bombarded with items all the way through. And if you do not have the proper defense, you could say goodbye to your lead. This is why, if you're out of items to defend yourself, you will take a lot of hits and you will need to recover quickly from those blows. I recommend building a card that mostly focuses on acceleration and taking handling and speed into consideration. I do not recommend a card built purely for speed, as it will affect your handling and acceleration things you need to fight for that first place. Number 2. Starting Boosts While this might seem like a minor thing to mention, it is always important to have all the advantage that you can. When a race is about to start, press and hold the A button half a second after the number 2 has been announced. This will give you a starting boost that might give you those seconds you can scrape off the final timing. There are different timings to this initial boost. The sooner you nail it, the bigger the starting boost will be. However, they will become a riskier as the boost increases, and vice versa. The later you nail it, the weaker it will be. Number 3. Get 10 coins as soon as possible. This will also be covered on the track in-depth analysis, so if you are having trouble with a particular course, you can go to it and learn a little bit more. Plain and simple, the more coins you have, the faster you will go. It is crucial to get those coins quickly in order to have the upper hand on your foes. The coins respawn after one lap around the track, so it is best to know their location if you do not have 10 by the end of the first circuit. Upon being hit, you lose 3 coins if you have that amount or more. It is recommended that you grab those right in front of you, otherwise you will just drift away from the action which might result into valuable time lost. On the other hand, Make sure you are in a good position to steal enemy coins when you hit them, to both increase your numbers and leaving them poor. Number 4. Work that R button. Another feature that will be covered on every one of the analysis videos. Performing drifts is not as crucial on the easiest difficulty. However, it will be near impossible for you to get 3 stars in 150cc and mirror mode cups if you do not perform such actions. You want to position yourself good enough on every sharp turn in order to gain the most powerful boost as well as being inside of the track. Why do I say this? There will be some times where earning the second level of drift boost will result into you getting out of the track or even worse, hitting a wall or falling to a bottomless pit. You should learn when to perform each type of boost. Number 5. Item Holding Like mentioned before, if you aren't going for the 3-star ranking, we can assume that you will be in first place most of the time. And this means only one thing. Item boxes will yield nothing but bananas, green shells, and tanuki tails. Occasionally one mushroom, 
but this isn't all too common. First, you should ditch the Tanuki Tail if you can or if you're about to hit another set of item boxes. In order to use this item properly, you will need to keep an eye on the bottom screen, which isn't really worth doing since you might lose concentration. The best thing that you can get is a set of 3 bananas, not only because it can fend off 3 attacks, but because you won't have to press anything. Always keep a second item in reserve for when the first one has been depleted by an incoming attack. On a side note, use the green shells to counterattack bananas that might stand in your path if they are difficult or impossible to avoid. Number 6. Mushroom Spots Yup, another factor that will be covered in each track analysis video. For each course, you want to examine your surroundings and knowing when to effectively use mushrooms. In most of the tracks, using a mushroom on a specific spot will be a lot better than using it immediately to attempt to catch up to your foes. This might backfire and they could catch up to you, so don't spend that useful item mindlessly. Number 7. Successful Gliding Believe it or not, doing certain movements with your circle pad while gliding will affect your speed and the time in which you are in the air. There are two important things to note on this tip. Number one, holding up on your circle pad while gliding will increase your speed and you can hold down to regain some height. However, this will sacrifice some speed and this is only recommended while you're about to hit the ground. Number two, if done at the right time, holding down on your circle pad will make you bounce off the ground no matter if your wheels have touched the track. This is really important on certain courses, especially ones where you can land into a surface capable of launching you into an air boost, since you will not only maintain your speed and glider, but you will hit a mini boost upon landing. Number 8. Shortcuts Most of the tracks do not have a set route. There could be multiple ways to finish a lap, and you want to learn what the most efficient one is. This will also be covered on the track analysis video to show you the fastest way to finish one lap. There aren't many true shortcuts as there are multiple routes, but most of these are almost always tied to the use of a mushroom. Number 9. Jumping Boosts See that ramp? Press R. See that little bump in the ground? Press R. See that ledge? Press R. Another feature that will be detailed on the track analysis video. You want to be on the lookout for anything you can bounce on since this will potentially end up on a mini boost, giving you a small advantage for every time you perform this. If you haven't done so, practice the track and explore all of the surfaces to learn which ones you can interact with and in order to get that valuable speed boost. Number 10. The Blue Shell Everyone's Nightmare There are three possible scenarios to this. One, if you're so far ahead there's nobody on your bottom screen, just take the hit you will lose a lot of time if you wait for somebody to take the blow for you. 2. If you're in first place, there is someone in your bottom screen and the shell has been launched, be a bitch and catch them in the explosion. You don't want them to overtake you. 3. If you're neck and neck with someone and you spot a blue shell in someone's inventory, slow down, let them take the hit and avoid the explosion. There is another scenario. Be the nightmare. This means you are the one throwing the fucking thing. But let's face it, if it happens, you are not getting a 3 star rank. And this concludes all of the tips that I can give you to obtain those precious golden stars and make everyone know that you know this game like the back of your hand. While it is intimidating to face someone with a 3 star award, it doesn't mean that they will be unbeatable in the race. But that will be covered in another video. If you're ready to hit the tracks, click here for an interactive course selection menu. If you want some tips before entering the world of Mario Kart 7 Wi-Fi races, click here. If you want to learn about card bills, see which one suits you the best, click here. If this video has helped at all, remember to share it with your friends. Leave it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and add it to your favorites if you would like to watch it again. So with any further ado, you guys have a great day, take care of yourself, and if you decide to watch any of the videos mentioned before, I will see you then.